Hello, welcome everybody. My name is Lori Chamberlain and I am the Education Manager here at Fear Free. And welcome to our webinar on taking your training services online. Wanted to let you guys know that this webinar is being recorded and it will be available on our website afterwards. And also let you guys know that you can ask questions by typing them into the Q&A field down below and we'll answer those at the end of the webinar. Today, I'm excited to have with me Laura Ryder, my new good friend from Australia. Uh, we are 12 hours apart, so it's 8 a.m. for her and 8 p.m. for me. Laura is the head dog trainer at Morley Vet Center in Perth, Western Australia. She's a Karen Pryor Academy certified training partner, a certified professional dog trainer, and a Fear Free certified trainer. She's got a couple other credentials in there too, but those are the highlights. Um, so welcome, Laura. Thank you so much for joining us and please take it away from here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Laurie, for, um, for uh, inviting me on. Um, I like we joked a little bit earlier about how many, how many Kongs it's going to take our dogs to um, hopefully not interrupt our webinar. So we will, we'll have a tally at the end, I think. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Um, so thank you for joining uh, me today. Uh, I guess uh, my topic I'm a bit excited about is to talk about how we as trainers are moving to more and more online uh, learning and uh, training with our clients. So uh, let's get started. Um, so a few topics I would like to talk about today. Um, first of all, we're going to look at how we go about creating online content. There's lots of options out there. Uh, but absolutely, um, I want to go through, I guess, some really nice, simple, effective strategies that kind of can get us out there um, and helping um, clients online. Uh, also looking at videos and resources. So what we're going to create, how we're going to get out there, how we're going to get them out there. Um, and again, helping those pet dog um, clients and their dogs. And I think a really important bit for this is working with clients online. Um, I know for us trainers, this can seem um, like a daunting time to be getting online, especially if we haven't done much of it before. Um, but I think it's a really daunting task for clients as well um, to take on a new way of training uh, and, and for them to, you know, to sign up and, and get involved. So we're going to chat about some ideas about how we can get our clients engaged as well. Um, and it wouldn't be a presentation without me throwing in a picture of my Border Terriers. Apologies, but I, I have to do it. There they are. Okay, so creating online content. Um, so as we know, there are many online learning platforms. Um, as a professional trainer, you've probably used a lot of them um, as you've kind of continued your education. Um, but today, um, what I really want to focus on is um, looking at some simple, effective ways to get online without having to invest, um, absolutely, money, uh, invest a lot of time in setting up um, to get on to these, um, you know, creating these online learning platforms for our clients. Um, we can absolutely go down that track, uh, but I think as well, if you're fairly new to this, um, there's kind of some smaller little baby steps that we can do before, before we kind of venture down that path. And like I mentioned um, previously, this is new skills for us, um, but it's also um, a really new style of learning for our clients. Okay, so I have, I'm throwing homework at you already. I apologize. But what I would like you to do, um, this is, I guess, so we, we are accountable. We're gonna get things happening. Um, while I'm chatting through the webinar, you might pop down a couple of notes or you might save it and do it at the end. Uh, but what I would like you to do is to think about two lists and maybe five things on each list. So first of all, I want you to make a list of your go-to training exercises. What are the top five things that you teach pet dogs? Okay, and we're going to go through some options in a little bit. Then list two, um, again, I want you to do top five. If you come up with more, awesome, keep writing. Um, but then I want you to highlight your top five. I don't want anyone feeling overwhelmed. So let's stick with five. Um, our five most common topics, so the advice that you're giving. You know, if you're working with puppy clients, I'm putting money on, it's probably toilet training, it's probably mouthing and biting, sleeping through the night, that kind of thing. Um, so uh, have a think about what, what do you talk about a lot with your clients, okay? And you're going to write down those topics um, for me. Okay, so let's look at our training exercise list. Um, so 
this really more than any other time, this is an opportunity to create resources. And I think it's important that we look at creating resources, um, yes, for now, for our online training that we're offer offering clients now, um, but future-proof. Uh, absolutely create content so that you have this and you can use this for years to come. Um, videos only need to be short and sweet. Um, again, we're dog geeks. I will watch hours of people train because it's what we do. Um, but for our pet dog clients, um, we want to uh, engage them and then we want them to stay engaged. So short and sweet is definitely the answer. So I'm going to make some really short little videos, uh, five minutes long, and absolutely you can use them for years to come. Uh, I must admit some clients definitely still like a little handout to go with it. So you might do a little uh, dot points, little PDF that's gonna kind of accompany each video for those clients that want that as well. Uh, so look at your training exercises and we're gonna kind of dive a bit deeper now into how we're gonna create those videos. Okay, so it is an opportunity to train your own dogs, which I think is nice often as a dog trainer. Um, our dogs are last on the list when it comes to training uh, because we're busy training everyone else's. Um, so absolutely your dogs can be the stars in your little short snippet training videos, um, but you don't need a dog. If we think about, if we're in a group class situation, um, we're standing up the front, we might have eight clients in front of us. Um, I don't have a dog with me then. I'm, I'm using my body, I'm you know I'm talking them through it, I'm explaining it in small baby steps. So you don't need a dog in these videos. Um, so for example, if we were teaching a nose touch, we can absolutely use a pretend doggy, flat hand and demo that way. Okay, so you don't have to have the dog. Um, also, I think as well, some of us um, get very nervous about training videos and then watching ourselves back. Um, I know I did when I first started. Um, be thinking about that our clients want to see a real world trainer, not a perfect trainer. Um, if we make it look seamless, perfect, we edit it like crazy and there's not a mistake in, in there at all, clients are going to see that video and go, I can't do that. That was amazing, I, ca I can't do that. Um, so absolutely, um, show the little mistakes. Um, you know, I joke, I'm the queen of the drop treat. You know, I'm like, oh, well, there's a freebie on the floor for the dogs, you know? Um, so let your clients see the real world trainer. Um, and that goes for your dog as well. Um, I'm more than happy for my clients to see the little mistakes that I do. Um, and then I'm like, oh, sorry, pups, mum's missed, missed times that again. Um, so absolutely be a real world trainer. That's what clients want. They will connect with you more. Um, don't stress out about creating these perfect videos where you're the perfect trainer. Okay, so let's dive in and have a look at some content. So let's, for example, say, so some of mine for say like a foundation training course, we might be looking at say like a nose touch, uh, possibly a reflex to name, um, some eye contact, engagement exercises. Um, and I think to help you with these videos, um, break it down and look at a structure. So it's going to help you stick to creating really nice, um, short, high impact videos. Um, and it's going to help our clients as well. So when you're doing your videos for your clients, what I want you to think about is what you're going to teach. So that's what you're going to say right up front. This is what we're going to teach. Why we are teaching the exercise. Um, as dog trainers, we know the reasons why, but our pet dog clients um, often often don't. Uh, and so really get them thinking about why we're teaching the exercise. What are the benefits of it? Um, I know, for example, when I first teach a uh, nose touch to clients, if I don't explain the why, they have no idea what the benefit of a nose touch is. Um, they, most of them don't even, they, they've never heard of a nose touch before. So they could, what, what's the point of this? So if I don't explain the why, if they don't see the benefits in teaching a nose touch, then they're not gonna invest the time in teaching it. But if right off the bat, right at the start, I give them a brief introduction about what we're teaching and then why we're teaching it. Um, as we know for a nose touch, oh my goodness, it's probably the best way I move my dog through any sort of environment, right? We use it for so many different skills we let the client know that straight up and they go, oh, wow, this, oh, wow, okay, cool. And they kind of, they're like, yep, I'm ready. Let's, let's do this. This sounds really valuable. Then we're going to talk about how we teach the exercise. 
Uh, and absolutely, then we can talk about some little criteria shifts. So if the dog's maybe struggling a little bit, how are we going to lower criteria? If the dog's nailing it, working really nicely, how are we going to increase that criteria and look at some little troubleshooting? Remember as well, we're not doing massive criteria shifts though, um, just tiny little baby steps just to get them started because the idea is, is the training video is going to kind of kickstart their training, help them get them along the way. And then absolutely, they're going to keep coming back to you for more progressions and to build on those behaviours that we're teaching. Okay, then we could spend hours, literally hours editing. Um, there's free programs, absolutely, there's a lot of different options out there. Your mobile phone, um, a lot of them will have little editing tool um, options in there as well these days. Um, but honestly, you can create videos without editing tools. Um, you literally press record, step away from the screen um, and go. Uh, and at the end, you're going to approach it, hit stop and you're done. Um, so don't spend hours on it. Again, like I said, clients want to see a uh, real life trainer, not a perfect trainer. Um, and they're hiring your services and engaging with you for your dog training skills, um, not for your movie making skills. Um, so, so, so don't spend hours on it. Um, you will be uh, more approachable, um, more relatable to your client if you just make it, make it nice and real life for them. Okay, so then what we can do is have a look at some common, common topics of advice. So we've created our little five minute videos, short and sweet of our little training exercises. Um, then, like I said, those topics of advice, um, I'm sure you can come up with a massive list. I threw a few up here. I'm um, thinking about puppies. It's probably what I do most of. Uh, so again, you could think about these as, um, as little um, resources that you could create for your clients. So it could be toilet training, mouthing and biting, chewing, sleeping through the night, um, building independence, which especially at this stage, as we know, is so, so important because there's so many dogs at home 24 hours a day with their person. Uh, so absolutely, that's a really important one. Um, and you know, the old one, puppy jumping up on people, everyone struggles with that. So you could absolutely create some content around that as well. Um, so there's a few different options of how to do this. Um, you could absolutely create the video. You're just going to hit record. You're going to stand in front of the video. You're going to talk them through it um, and they can be your resources. If you're comfortable um, doing that, go for it. Um, the other one I do use a lot of is I use PowerPoint presentations um, a lot. Uh, you can actually record your uh, voice and a little video box like you guys can see me today um, through PowerPoint and I'll chat you through that in a moment. But a really nice one, you can create a couple of little points in PowerPoint, create a little video and you've got this amazing resource for your clients that they can access. Um, you can also um, use, so for Mac users, um, there's also a QuickTime player. So there you can record your screen. There's quite a few YouTube short, like three, four minute little videos on how to do that. Um, but you can create your content in PowerPoint and then record your screen using QuickTime player. Uh, and there is also a product for our PC users called Loom, which does the same thing. So again, have a look around, have a bit of a feel and see what works for you. Um, but absolutely, you can create some really nice resources. And a quick little reminder, these are going to be um, resources that, you know, you can use forever. Um, and it's such a time saver. Um, I have found by creating online content for all of my clients, um, they do, they just, it's, it's such a time saver for me. Uh, also, they can sit down and watch it in their own time. Uh, the rest of the family can watch it. So it's not just what, if you're only talking to one client, they've then got to try and pass the message on to the rest of the family, whereas they could all sit down and watch the, this video. They can go back to it and refer to it if they missed something. Uh, so absolutely creating these resources, especially during these times, um, it's gonna be really, really beneficial um, for, for the future. Okay, so I thought I'd quickly show for anyone that hasn't done um, PowerPoint recordings, anything like that before, I just thought I'd do a couple of little um, screenshots to show you how easy it is. Um, so here is my PowerPoint presentation open. Um, as you can see here, there's a little um, record slideshow. You're gonna go down to record. You then get presented with this screen here. 
So you can have two options. Down the bottom corner, there's a little camera function. You can click on that and all of a sudden you appear there on the screen. Uh, or what you can do is you can leave that with a line through it and you're just recording your voice. So it's entirely up to you whether you are present or not um, visually. Um, so you can either just talk or you can have that video as well. Uh, up the top left, you've got your record button. It is simply that you're going to hit that, talk through your uh, presentation, scroll through like you normally would, and then you're going to hit stop. Um, so really, really um, simple to use and really, really effective for creating um, that online content for your clients. Okay, then to save it as a little video, uh, so you're in your um, presentation, you've recorded your um, video and audio or just audio, uh, you are then going to go save as and you're going to scroll down and find where it's empty for video. You're going to hit that one, uh, PowerPoint will do its thing and you have a video ready to go um, for your clients. Um, so really nice um, and straightforward to use. Um, again, for Mac users, um, you can absolutely look at the QuickTime player. So it does a really, really similar um, function for you. Also, if you're interested, have a look at Loom as well for recording your screen. Okay, so we've spent this time looking at creating content, so in these videos and resources for our clients. Um, I guess the options then is how do we go about sharing them? Uh, so heaps of different options. Um, again, my go-to at this stage, um, I do use uh, YouTube for some of my videos. They are public, they're, they're available for anyone to access. Um, I do also have unlisted and private settings as well. So you can choose that. So that way you, you only send it to the person. They can't share it with others. Um, and so I think absolutely pay, people paying for your services um, you can, you know, it's theirs. It's this private little, you know, training training library that they get they get access to. Um, Vimeo is another option. Again, you can upload your videos there. Clients can then access it from there. Uh, you could, for your ones that you're happy to be uh, public uh, and to use, I guess, to promote what you do, um, you could absolutely be using social media to get your little videos out and about. Uh, you could have links on your website for your videos, uh, for the ones that you want to have public. Um, or absolutely for those ones that you want um, private, we do, you know, do a we transfer to the client. You just send the video straight, straight to them and they can download it and watch it that way. So again, simple little options, but again, have a play and, and find out what works best for you. Okay, so as far as the videos and resources go, um, summary of it, um, have a go making two lists. If it ends up as two massive long lists, awesome. Uh, but think about, highlight your top five. So your top five training exercises that you teach, is it gonna be a sit, a nose touch, eye contact, you might do something on recalls, loose leave walking as we know is always really, really um, one that clients want to know about. Um, so get those lists um, started um, and spend that little bit of time being um, a real life trainer. Don't stress about it being a perfectly edited video. Um, clients find you more relatable if it's just you training um, just like you were if you were up in front of them in a group training class. Um, so get the videos done, um, maybe have a play with your PowerPoint, see what you can come up with, some um, nice little ones there that you could do as far as those, uh, that what you might have on that list. Um, and absolutely, um, I think this is the big take home. Look at real life trainer versus perfect trainer. Be the real life trainer. Don't stress if, you know, you drop treats in your training session, um, you know, if your dog wanders off screen and then comes back to you. Um, this is what clients are going to have when they're training. So uh, be as relatable as you possibly can for them. All right, so let's move on to our clients now, um, because I think this is a big one. We can create all of this content and be really keen to um, get clients on board with online training, uh, and they're going to sign up and they're going to do um, sessions with you and you're going to send them videos so that they can do their homework. Um, but then, you know, there's kind of crickets, you know, um, you're like, come on, sign up. Um, 
but you're not getting the enrollments that you were kind of hoping for. So I think this really is um, the fact that clients may be nervous about using this, this new way of training. For majority of clients, when you train your dog, it is in person, right? They're either in a group class, um, you're going into their house, or you're meeting them out and about for a one-on-one -on -one training session. Uh, so this is really new for them as well, just as, as much as it is new for us. So I think the most important thing is to be really clear in what we do with them, how it's going to work, how the process is going to run, have a really clear structure, um, which is going to give them confidence in the process. So for example, um, if you're using Zoom to do online training, you're going to send them um, an email. Uh, so it's going to say something like five minutes before the session, you're going to click on the link. Zoom will ask you to do X, Y, Z. Um, as you guys know, they'll be, so they ask for their, the camera to be on to check the audio. Um, and then I'll be there waiting for you on the screen. Any problems, give them your phone number and off you go. Um, if you're really new to Zoom, Skype, uh, there's heaps of different um, little tutorials out there for them. Again, they're short and sweet uh, and they're easy to use. So do jump in, have a go, um, and um, we will um, kind of move to the next one. Okay, so I think with online training sessions, uh, I think for us, um, I think that we, we need a template uh, because if this is new to you, it's that daunting feeling of, of training new. We've been running training classes, you know, and working in people's homes for years. Um, we kind of get comfortable with that. Um, but what I want you to do is think about when you were that first, that brand new trainer, you know, you, um, you just got out there. It's your first, you know, your first training course that you're running. It's your first few home visits. Um, Think about the template, think about that lesson plan. Oh my goodness, the hours I'd spend writing down and scribbling this lesson plan that I was gonna create in classes. Because I really, as a, as a, as a novice trainer, I needed that structure. Um, and then as we practice more, right? We don't, we don't need that structure as more. We don't need you know, those notes of all that lesson plan that we can kind of glance to as we're running classes to make sure we're staying on track and we're covering everything we're supposed to. But now everything's different, right? We're looking more and more at working with our clients online. And if that's daunting for us, um, I think just like we would, I don't know, I'm always thinking about what would I do if it was a dog? And if we were changing the environment and changing the context for a dog who knew a real, like new behavior, knew a behavior really well, um, I'd make it easier for them, right? I'd, I'd kind of, I'd add more structure, I'd lower criteria. Um, and so the same thing for us as trainers. So have a template for what you're going to do with your online training sessions to make sure they're effective, they run well, and you feel confident with how they're going to run. Just like you did when you first started running group classes, um, however many years ago. Um, so what I do when we're running online training sessions, first of all, really important, we're going to get that thorough history taking, uh, whether that be with a new client. So really, really important we get a really thorough history. Or it might be a client that we've seen and we've been seeing, you know, on a regular basis. We're still going to do a take a history, you know. So how's how's the last couple of weeks been going with training? Have you had any hiccups? Anything you want to address? So absolutely, we're always going to spend that first little bit of time going through history. Always important, as we know, to talk about management strategies. So really important, as we know, to set up the environment to help the dog succeed. So depending on what the um, issue is that the client is having with the dog, we're going to obviously recommend some management strategies. Uh, so if it's that the dog keeps uh, jumping up on the kids at home, um, okay, cool. So management strategy might be, you know, is there a baby gate that we can maybe, is there a different room? Is there a different zone that we can kind of have the kids and the dog in um, while we're starting the training post process? So we're trainers, we know the management strategies, but have it in there. We need to make sure our clients are getting that help and then get training. And with our training, I'm always looking at the what, why and how, just like our little training videos we discussed previously. So what we're going to teach based on the issues that the client has presented to us, 
the really, really important one because it means that we're going to get a client who's engaged and eager to learn because they see the benefits of training the exercise we've recommended, spend time on the why. Um, and then absolutely, we're going to talk about the how. So how we're going to train it. Uh, so you can absolutely uh, demonstrate a couple of training skills, uh, ask any questions, um, and then you've got your little resources, right? So you've created these little videos. You can send clients um, those videos to kind of complement the training session that you've done online with them. Something to be mindful of, um, your own dogs. Um, be thinking about when we're training uh, with a client online, um, our own dogs are gonna be present. Um, if they're going to be present, like literally in the room with you, near you, um, set them up for success as well. Um, so it might be that they're on their mat, maybe a platform, my guys like sitting up on um, a platform. Uh, it might be that they're going to be in their crate with a long lasting chew, uh, the stuffed Kongs, um, never go astray in my house. Uh, so again, set it up for success. If you get flustered during online session with your client because the postman has just pulled in and your dogs have kicked off, um, you know, it's real life. It happens. Don't stress about it. But at the same time, if we can set up the environment so it doesn't happen, even better. Um, if you're going to pop your dogs away, absolutely. It's what my guys have done at the moment. Um, they've got enrichment activities um, and absolutely think about those alert barkers. Can you put potentially block vision or maybe add background noise um, to kind of reduce those triggers so your dogs are kind of happy and relaxed while you're working with that client one-on-one. -on -one. Okay, so I thought I'd show you um, one of my lovely little um, clients. So this is what our Zoom one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions look like. Um, so this is Marie with her lovely dog, Gracie. Uh, so um, as you can see, um, she's got a lovely backyard. Uh, and so she's set up. Um, and some people get a bit worried about, can you hear? But absolutely, we had no issues. There's been no issues at all with clients being able to hear. Um, I don't use a microphone or anything like that. Um, I just... Um, set my laptop up and, and off we go. So when our clients are online with us and they're training through a session with us, um, it's really nice to get them training their dog if they're comfortable to. Um, some of them feel a bit awkward about it though. So there's no pressure for them to train their dog. You can absolutely talk through everything, that history, control and management, how you're gonna teach the exercise, um, you're then going to send them the little videos and then do a follow-up. Go, okay, so shall we book for um, this time in three days or this time next week, depending on what the issue is that you're dealing with. Um, and that way they can kind of go away and train because I, I do um, know that a lot of clients do initially struggle to start with, that they think they've got a camera on them and so they, they can get quite awkward about it. So um, there's no pressure for them to actually train their dog in front of you um, right at the start, give, give them a little bit of time to go do that on their own. And then as they come back and build confidence, you can actually start watching and helping them as they go. Um, just be mindful when they are training their dogs, just help them a little bit. So thinking about how they're going to set up their camera. So think about the angle. Um, lighting can be a big one, especially if you've got a, um, a black dog in a dark room, it can be quite difficult to see. Um, and also think about handler and dog position. So ask them to stand side on. Um, because otherwise if they, you know, they're just training their dog, they don't think about it and their back is to you, um, you can't really see the dog that well. So again, just simple, clear little instructions about where you want your client to stand. Um, and if you think about it, we do it in group training, like in-person classes all the time, right? We're asking them, okay, can you stand at this cone? And this is the exercise you're gonna do. So just a modified version of that for our clients in their, um, in their homes. So when they're training, um, if they're confident, uh, letting you kind of observe them as they're training, uh, absolutely like what we would usually do, uh, we're gonna offer criteria shifts. So we might see the dog struggling a little bit or the client maybe struggling with some of the mechanics. So um, how can we adjust you know, the next rep um, so we can set them up to, uh, for success? Um, always really, really important that we're being mindful of giving positive feedback for clients um, and um, try to be as specific as possible with this. Um, you know, we can say, oh, good job or nice work, um, but um, be really, um, as much as you can, 
uh, be really specific. So, um, you know, something like oh, great timing with your marker word, uh, or I loved how you tossed the treat because that reset your dog to come back and choose to engage with you again. You know, so find some little things that, that are really um, kind of um, positive feedback and really specific to what the client's doing. Um, then we can talk about a summary. So what we've taught in class, we can absolutely ask them if they've got any um, session, uh, any issues um, that they um, that they have um, before they go away and keep training. Uh, and absolutely, we've got resources because we've just created them, right? Uh, we've got some resources we can send them so they've got something to refer to uh, as they go with their um, training during the week before we see them um, for their next online session. Um, and a really, really important one, um, book for the next session. Um, I think that this is something that as trainers we don't do enough of. We kind of get a bit awkward about the whole marketing, selling ourselves um, kind of part of dog training. Um, but our clients want, want it. They want to come back and do training. Um, so on the spot, say really good you know that time worked really well for us today shall we book in for same time next week like get them booked in um instead of going oh so see how you go let let us know and um and and then we, maybe we can organize another session um uh absolutely be more kind of um i guess down the line let's book for the next session. You did a great job today. Next session, you know, this is what we'd really like to start working towards and, and absolutely get them booked in. Okay, a couple of extra benefits with training online. Um, so first of all, um, Zoom does allow you to record meetings. Um, do double check and get the client's permission. Uh, if you find it's a client who might be a little bit awkward about being on a video already um, and doing this online training, Maybe don't worry about doing it the first time. Um, it might add extra pressure to that client and it might kind of turn them off a little bit. Uh, but absolutely, if you see their confidence um, build and, and they're happy to, I think recording the sessions are a, a nice option. Um, we can go back and watch a little bit. Um, as we know, we can go back and go, oh yeah, I missed that there. Um, and I think it's a really nice thing because you can share it with clients. So I'm a big one, even for when I'm doing in-person training with my clients, that if they um, are happy for me too, I would record little bits of their training because then I can just, and again, when we're in person, I record on my phone, I can just play it back to them um, and I'll point out, oh, so did you see at that moment? So there might be, you know, a, a shift in, in body language and then we go, oh, well, why was that? Oh, well, you know, there was, you know, a couple of kids started running around and, and playing on the playground and so the dog started to look a bit uncomfortable about that. You know, so you can show the body language by playing it back on video. Um, obviously, we're not out and about training at the moment, but online, absolutely, we can point out some little body language things. If we see something in the moment, um, we can kind of um, show that little bit of video back to the client um, and say, oh, did you notice at three minutes 30, um, you know, I just like you'd have a little bit of a look here and what I watch your dog's body language. You know, it might be that the criteria shift was too much. And so, so we saw a little bit, a bit of disengagement from the dog or there might be a distraction that, so again, we've seen a shift in body language. Um, but again, it's nice. It's a video there. Um, again, use it as a resource and you can get your client to kind of have, have a look at it. Okay, so I thought I'd really quickly show you. So this is um, Gracie again. Um, so this is just one of my cute trick clients. Um, I love working with Gracie. She's a clever pup and Marie is a lovely, lovely owner. Um, so um, I'll show you this little video. So this is us working on uh, Zoom. Uh, so what we were doing here is um, Gracie has just learned to do, she does a little head dip, uh, which uh, Marie was starting to, um, so she captured it. And now we were starting to put on cue because she was offering it a lot off cue, obviously. Uh, so she was throwing a lot. So we just threw it into um, a training session. So we were doing some well-known behaviors and then throwing in the little cue um, for her head dip. And if there was any little head dips that she offered where Marie hadn't cued her, um, Marie was practicing not reinforcing those. So we were aiming going down the track of can we um, now put it on cue? So anyway, really short and sweet, but it's cute border collie. So let's have a watch.
Okay, um, so a couple of things. Um, here. So one, and again, I do this in person as well. Well, my training um, with our clients, um, you can hear I did a little yay because I can't help myself. Um, but when they're actually training the dog, um, try, try to be quiet so they can focus um, on their dog. I think sometimes um, we try to talk while they're training um, and that can be really um, hard for clients. So let them do, let's say, 10 little reps um, then I kind of, so like I said, ask her to do one more thing, finish the session. It might be last treat or, you know, let them know to finish. Um, and then again, you can give them some positive feedback. You can talk about criteria shifts and they can have another little go. Um, so again, um, you can see we set the video up really easily. Um, she could hear me even though she was standing um, quite a way away from that. So I could get her in shot. Um, we didn't have any issues at all. Um, and um, again, a cute little one, but I thought I'd throw in, you know, a cute, a cute border collie. Why not? Okay, so if you're thinking about getting to um, online training, but again, you're like, oh, I don't know if I'm ready to um, have a go with a, with a real life paying client yet, um, pair up with another trainer, um, you, know, uh, you know, and you know what, they don't have to be in your area, right? It's, you can be, you can come and do a session with someone in Australia. Um, you can do, you know, and so pair up, um, set up some little training sessions. Um, you can practice. So you might have another trainer. One of you is going to be the trainer. One of you is going to be the client. Um, have a little play and then you can kind of swap roles and just again, build confidence in how you're teaching and training online and, and nut it out. And again, it's giving you both new skills. Um, absolutely. Um, your loyal clients, um, a really nice one. You could see, you know, could they, um, are they happy to do a free session because you're just learning this, you'd like to test the waters. Um, but what they're going to do in return um, is to um, hopefully write a little testimonial or a review for you. Um, and I think that that's a really, really important one when we're marketing our online services um, because we know they're going to be a benefit. Um, but a lot of our pet dog clients are a bit like, is, is this going to work? How's it going to work? We usually go to training in, in a group, in person. Um, so I think some a couple of reviews from um, a loyal client or one or two of them, um, I think is a really, really clever marketing strategy because you can use those to convince um, potential other clients that online training sessions will be a benefit because you're not telling them the benefits. Another pet dog owner is telling them the benefits of, of what they got out of your sessions. So um, I thought this was um, lovely. This was what Marie wrote um, for me. Uh, and so um, I, anyway, I'll give you guys a second to quickly um, have a read of it. Um, but I, um, it, it made me um, very happy and very pleased. Um, she's a lovely, lovely lady. Um, and again, this testimonial has gotten me a lot of bookings. Makes me smile reading it again. Okay, all right, let's move on. <laughs> okay, um, then there's the option of obviously group classes. So how we're gonna run those. Um, I think if you're really new to this, build some confidence with some one-on-one -on -one sessions initially, um, and then you can absolutely jump in and give group sessions a go. Uh, there's absolutely Zoom tutorials out there for how to run um, a group session. Um, but I think, um, give it a go. Uh, what we have done is started, so with our uh, group clients, when we first started doing this kind of training with them, is that we threw out little challenges. So we've been throwing out training challenges um, for oh, maybe about six weeks now, uh, where um, we're kind of quite active in our little social Facebook group with all of our clients. Uh, and um, then what we're doing is that we're throwing, so for example, we had one week, we had a recall challenge um, last week, and then whoever won that, so they were to take a little video of their dog doing the little recall challenge, um, upload it, and then they got a free training session. So again, it's a nice one. You can kind of engage clients, give them a little bit of training and advice, um, and then get them engaged. And, um, and, you know, and then again, you've got that content, you've got that little um, bit of um, footage or those little testimonials written. Um, of your group classes. So I think that's really important, getting those really lovely clients engaged with you 
uh, and getting them to do the testimonials because they're going to sell your products, right? They're going to be the ones that are your biggest advocates. Um, so, so think about those loyal clients and see if, they, if they'll come on board and, and help you as you move towards online training. Um, so this was our little reflex to name um, using, we use a little ball game for this little exercise. Uh, so this was um, a little one. So this is um, me and my four trainers that um, work for me at the vet clinic. Uh, so we decided we would make it because obviously everyone is in smaller confined spaces at the moment that we would, instead of using distance as part of our recalls, there's lots of other things we can practice with recalls. Anyway, so this is us having a bit of um, fun um, with um, doing our reflex to name as part of a recall. All right, okay, so that was our little training challenge we threw out to our um, clients. Uh, if you guys notice the little uh, white staffy mix puppy down uh, the bottom uh, in the bottom video, uh, he's actually a, a deaf puppy. And so obviously we weren't doing reflex name for him. If you noticed um, my lovely trainer, Georgia there, uh, she was using her um, visual cues to get him to um, work. And he was, he's doing really, really well. He's an amazing pup. Um, so again, we kind of threw this out. We can use lots of other distractions um, when we're, you know, getting people to think about what they could do for training at home. Um, yeah, we can't get them out and about um, as much as we usually can, but, you know, we can be, bring the distractions to them. We can have random things lying on the ground. Like you saw, we could have the tubs of treats. Uh, we could use things like, uh, so we use the Soundproof Puppy Training app, which has heaps of different sounds on there. So there's kids playing, there's cat noises, there's dogs barking. So absolutely, we could get that as part of our, you know, our um, training challenges if we're doing recalls, um, you know, training online in people's lounge rooms. Um, you know, we can kind of be a bit creative um, and, and we don't have to do it out and about at a park at this stage. So anyway, there was a nice little video um, of us kind of um, playing around. We all took turns being the trainer, uh, which I think was nice as well because it gave, definitely gave my trainers a bit more confidence of, um, of how to use the kind of the online platform to, to train. And we used this little video to show our clients um, and they saw how easy it was and it kind of got them engaged and them thinking, oh yeah, okay, we, we online training can work. Um, and so we're getting more and more people signing up, which is great news. Okay, so that kind of finishes um, my little uh, presentation. Mm, sorry, more pictures of Border Terriers. Uh, if you would like to um, get in touch with me at all, um, I am on um, Facebook. Uh, I also, as mentioned earlier, I do work at Morley Vet Centre. So it's vetcentre.com.au. Um, I am also part of the education team for Institute of Modern Dog Trainers over here in Australia. So there's a couple of links. So any of those um, you jump on, you will be able to get in touch. Um, if you have um, any questions you come up with um, after the webinar. Um, but I think now, um, I think Laurie is going to um, jump back in and um, maybe we have a few questions um, for me because it was, yeah. it's kind of weird, right? I'm just, I'm talking away going, oh, I'm wondering how the questions are going, waiting to see. So I'm sure Laurie is going to fill me in. Thank you, Laura. Thank you so much. That was really great information. I learned a lot from watching you and I'm sure everyone else did too. Uh, we do have a couple of questions. The first one from Nanette. She wants to know how often you run the online sessions and or do you have them, the client video training sessions and then send them to you to review before the live, next live session with you? Yeah. Okay. Sure. Um, I must admit, I've got a so I've got a couple of clients that are happy to video their sessions and then send me sessions. Um, but major but majority of my clients, um, I think it's just uh, 
feeling awkward in front of a camera thing. Um, don't want to, don't want to do the video and then send it to me. Um, so for most of my clients, I'm in touch with them once a week. Uh, and they're just doing the videos as I watch now, um, through zoom. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers that question, but I find, give them the choice. They don't have to submit videos. Cause I think sometimes you, there's the, there's the potential we could lose a client there. Cause they, that makes them feel really awkward. Thank you. Great. Uh, another question about pricing. Would you, do yep. you charge the same price as an in-person meeting? Yeah, sure. So, um, for, so like I, um, like I said, for those ones where I got them to do the testimonials, I definitely started with some free sessions. Um, and now what I've done, I'm pretty lucky in that my travel area is really little. Clients travel to me a lot for training. So I don't have the costs, like I don't factor in travel costs at this stage. So yes, my pricing is still the same. But I think that for, for other trainers I know, absolutely they're factoring in they, they travel quite a lot. They'll travel half an hour or 45 minutes to get to a client's house, to get to a training ground. And so if they're factoring that in that they're not having to do that anymore, um, then you could absolutely be, I guess, looking at your numbers and deciding wh whether you're going to charge the same or whether in actual fact you, you could charge a cheaper rate because you're, you don't have those travel costs. Great, thank you. Um, looks like one more question. What well, Beth wants to know if you ever take dog to dog aggression cases remotely. Yeah, sure. Uh, so what I have, so I've got, a, I've got, um, a few clients for which I was working on before the world turned upside down, um, with dog dog aggression cases. Um, and I'm still in touch with, with them. Um, but it, I guess with them, it's that little bit challenging, obviously, because I we can't do too much because like we're not exposing them to other dogs at this stage because we can't get out and about. Um, I do have a few new guys that I have, however, um, taken on. And basically what we're doing is that, so yes, it is aggression cases. I'm um, working online with them and we're really just getting um, the, the foundations. Okay, so engagement, finding the dog's reinforces, uh, getting clients really good at reading and observing body language. And, you know, I actually, I've actually kind of in, I've liked these sessions because I find a lot of pet dog people, they have a, you know, it's an aggression case and they want, they want the dog to get around other dogs now, you know, and it's too rushed. Whereas it's almost forcing clients at this stage that there's no other real choice at the moment except to practice the foundations. And so I think it'll be interesting to see once restrictions are lifted, once we can get out and about, how, how those dogs respond because we've spent more time training the foundations, if that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. Yeah, th thank you for that answer. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's see, a question from Dan wondering if he says he struggles with making PowerPoint presentations look professional. Do you have any recommended specific tutorials for PowerPoint and style tips and template? Yeah, cool. Um, I guess, um, I guess like the videos, um, don't worry too much about them looking super professional. I think, um, your clients want to see real life, um, a real life trainer. They're not hiring you for your editing computer skills. Um, if in doubt, cute pictures of border terriers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> always cute pictures of dogs. That always works. <laughs> cute pictures, cute pictures always helps. Um, but no, do you know, I think, um, and also I think if we spend too much, I don't know, I've seen some PowerPoint presentations where they're too, they're too busy. You know, you can, you can do all of these amazing graphics where things float in and zoom around and pictures disappear and, and so a little bit of it is great, but sometimes it can be too busy and it takes away from the content. So I think instead fo focus on the content. Um, I think if you've got good content, um, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter about how pretty it looks. Definitely agree with that. And we also with something you said about, think about using fewer words, certainly as a course designer for fear free, the, the fewer bullet points and the more pictures or graphics or that, you know, just, just simplify. Yeah, thanks, Laurie. Yeah, simplify. <laughs> yes. Yes. So you, you said it now, you said it, it was great. Um, okay. Question from Erica who wants to know, she said she have, she has always emailed the client a bullet point list about follow-ups. 
uh, of what was covered in a general interview uh, overview. With the virtual sessions, she's still doing this, but wondering is there something that's better or more streamlined, a way to send follow ups to clients? Yeah, sure. Um, so I must admit, I used to spend, and I mean, I guess it, dep it depends on whether this is, um, I guess, like, like training, like if we're doing recall stuff, or if this is more of like a behavior case, I guess it, it changes a little bit. But oh my goodness, when I first started, I spent hours writing training reports. And I, I look back and I'm sure my clients didn't read my pages of, of stuff. So I think it's great that she's already doing like she's already simplifying it and just doing bullet points like well done you. Um, because I think sometimes we, we, we write too many words. Um, so I think a couple of bullet points is really nice. And then um, I guess how I do it, so it is, it's a couple of bullet points and then there's like a, there'll be a video link to whichever training exercise we've kind of worked on, um, you know, and get them looking at it um, that way. So potentially stick with the bullet points, um, but maybe have, um, you know, a link to one of the little training videos that's going to be a good resource for them. Great. Thank you. Um, another good question that's relevant to the time that we're in right now about puppy clients and socializing your puppy, g given where we are. Um, yeah. So how do we help people realize that or understand that online puppy sessions are still useful, even though you're not necessarily having your puppy next to other puppies and being around other puppies? Yeah, yeah, that's a great question because it's definitely one that I think we're all struggling with. Um, I think, do you know, my biggest one I think is that we need to, um, I guess how I've kind of been aiming for it is kind of creating content around what social, defining socialization. Because you're absolutely right. I think for pet dog, the average new pet dog puppy owner, um, their idea of socialization is, oh, my puppy needs to meet lots of dogs, right? Um, whereas as professional trainers, we know it is so much more than that. You know, it's, um, it's different environments, it's different people, uh, it's different sounds, it's different textures, it's, it's everything. So I think trying to create some content around defining what socialization is, um, and defining it for clients, I think will help. Um, and then if they're not going to jump on board for the socialization aspect, because we're still kind of trying to educate them, um, I think absolutely be marketing that, you know, you're there to help them with all of those puppy issues they're having because, you know, my goodness, they're all struggling with the toilet training, mouthing and biting, you know, the teething, the, the crying at night. So if we go down that track, we're kind of answering the questions that they've kind of posed to us that they're struggling with. And then once we have them engaged, we can then kind of educate them that bit more on, on socialization um, and, and, and what it actually means. Definitely agreed. Yeah, a great way to attack that for sure. Uh, just one more question. So for the students you have who aren't videoing their training sessions, how do you give them focus? How do you structure your, your feedback? Sorry, not focus, feedback for them. Yeah, sure. So, do you know, every client I've had have ended up video being on Zoom with me training their dog. Um, the first one or two sessions, I've had some clients that you just see them go, oh, oh, and you can see them get really awkward. And I'm like, that's fine. If you want to go away and practice on your own first, that's fine. Um, but I think once I've got them back, I think maybe, I guess they feel a bit, they know me, that we've got a little bit of a relationship. So I've kind of gotten to know them a little bit. They've maybe had a little go of practicing with their dog. Um, they then probably have got a few questions about it. And so what I found by the second or third go, they're, they're more than happy to show you on the video. I haven't had anyone not do that. I think just the first time when they, they've never met me before and I'm going, okay, train your dog. And they're like, ah, it's a bit nerve wracking. Um, I don't push it. Um, but second, third time, they're more than happy. So I, I, that, then I can start giving them feedback. Great. Thank you, Laura. Um, looks like we are, we've got all the questions for now and it's a good time to wrap it up and say thank you so much for your time and thank you for joining us at the crack of dawn, your time. Oh. A, lot of, a lot of us here on the East Coast are getting ready for bed, but uh, you know, it's nice and early for you. So really appreciate you being with us to, today slash tonight and uh, hope you'll join us again soon. Thank you so Great, much, thanks. everybody. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Laurie. It was lovely to chat. You as well, thanks.
All right, thank you.